Good morning. The Deputy Prime Minister, John Prescott, is in Birmingham today to announce more regeneration for the city centre. In all, one and a half billion pounds of development is planned in five separate schemes. Our business correspondent, Mark Foster, has been given an exclusive view of one of them. Mass House Circus and the concrete collar of the Ring Road that has strangled Birmingham's growth. But this computer-generated scheme, shown exclusively to the BBC, shows how that would be replaced with boulevards, shops, offices and housing. There is uh, somewhere in the region of about 25 acres of land around this mass house area which could be linked with the private sector to ensure that jobs are created, that companies flourish. The road scheme will cost £50 million but open up a barren landscape and link to massive retail projects. The rejection of the 60s road scheme is part of Birmingham's journey from workshop of the world through talk shop of the world to being a world of shops. Now it's time to catch up with all the latest news from our region. On today's lunchtime news, five teenagers are arrested after pensioner is left for dead. And the Russian pilot who promises to leave an air show in a spin. But first, a Tory MP has denied making racist comments in... A £350 million scheme to turn Birmingham's boring into the shopping centre of the future has been given the go-ahead. Think of Birmingham and you'll probably come up with Jasper Carrot, New Street Railway Station and the Bull Ring. All have been the butt of jokes in their time, but for at least one of them that could be about to change. The Bull Ring has become a symbol of everything that was wrong with planning in the 60s, but soon it'll be demolished and its concrete collar broken. In four years time there'll be a new three-storey building, a new site for the open markets, two new department stores and a 3,000 vehicle car park and bus station. The infamous rotunda will be retained. We want to get away from some of the mistakes of the past, the, the tired concrete jungle of a place that the, the old bull ring has symbolised and create a place that will attract people. The new bull ring is expected to attract 22 million shoppers a year. The developer Hammerson says the bull ring will retain every facet of its fame, but this time for all the right reasons. Meanwhile, Millennium Point, Birmingham's new landmark for the next century, is getting more than £23 million of funding from Europe. The grant was announced this morning by Deputy Prime Minister John Prescott on a visit to the site. The project should create over 4,000 jobs and attract 800,000 visitors a year. The government says that should lead to more regeneration of the Digbeth area and the east side of the city. The final go-ahead has been given for a £350 million plan to turn Birmingham's bullring into the shopping centre of the future. We, we haven't got the pictures there, right? I'll read on anyway and tell you that although some work has already begun, the developers have only just received detailed planning permission. There'll be a new site for the markets, two new department stores, a car park and a bus station. The infamous rotunda stays. The work should be completed in four years' time. The final stage in ambitious proposals to revitalize Birmingham city centre were unveiled today. Five schemes costing more than one and a half billion pounds and intended to pull in millions more shoppers are now in the pipeline. Our business correspondent Mark Foster has been given an exclusive look at some of the plans. Mass House Circus and the concrete collar which is strangling Birmingham. Built in the 60s when the car was king, traffic took precedence over people. It's left a blighted landscape of desolate car parks and subways. But this computer-generated model, shown exclusively to the BBC, shows how the flyover would be flattened and replaced by boulevards, shops, offices and housing. Regenerating areas like this needs a whole mix of uses. It needs housing, then it needs offices, and it needs leisure together to sustain a quality of urban life that will bring people back into the cities rather than out into the green belt areas. G8 put Birmingham on the international map. But away from the conference halls, the city was criticised for its poor shopping. 
Improvement could come from Martineau Galleries, a £400 million scheme which depends on the Mass House redevelopment. There are a lot of buildings which are approaching physical and economic uh, obsolescence. The units are really the wrong size for modern retailing requirements and there's only one department store uh, in the whole city and when you compare that with other major cities um, that's obviously a great omission. But separate proposed developments could result in four department stores. We've only just started to come to Birmingham but uh, we're quite impressed with the shops and if they can improve them all the better. I think it'd be a good idea, we do need a lot more shops really. Yeah. I mean, all the big stores are just disappearing, aren't they? Uh, yeah, overall, I'm happy to see the changes. I think probably things like the Rotunda as well could do to be uh, demolished. In fact, the Rotunda is one of the few edifices to survive the development work, which will turn Birmingham into a giant building site for five years. But it'll be worth it, they say. We are looking to the future and providing the citizens of Birmingham with the quality environment that they wish to live, work and shop in. By then, the city will have completed its journey from workshop of the world through talk shop of the world to a world of shops. Well, Mark Foster joins us now from an area of Birmingham which could soon look very different. Mark, in your report there, we saw some pictures of Birmingham which are images I think we'd all rather forget. What difference is this money actually going to make? Well, if it all comes to fruition, it'll make a tremendous difference. For example, where I'm standing now, I'll be... 30 feet lower in about five years time what's going to happen is you'll see the demolition of this ring road and some of the buildings over there for example the Argus Superstore the building next to it above the Toys R Us car park those will all disappear they'll be replaced by new buildings and on the other side this warehouse here in the foreground and those buildings in the background there just in front of the spa they'll all disappear only the rotunda will remain is Birmingham really big enough for all these schemes well, you're talking about international property developers here who say they've done their homework, and you heard some of those shoppers there, they said they could withstand it. You've got to remember that some of the stores that we did have, two department stores, have already gone. And as they said, some of these buildings are now obsolete. They're just not attracting the sort of rents that competitive buildings would attract. Birmingham does seem to be flavour of the month. Why the sudden rush to invest in the city? I don't think there's really a rush. It does seem that way, though, after Eurovision and G8. But some of the plans, particularly for the bullring, have been on the uh, table for some time. In fact, yesterday, the bullring got detailed planning permission, and it also attracted Debenhams as one of the, uh, super, one of the department stores there. It just seems they're all coming together at the same time, and really, they're hinged by this demolition of the ring road scheme. Mark Foster in Birmingham, thank you for joining us. In the 60s, it was a confident, futuristic vision of city life, but by the 80s, Birmingham's bullring had become a symbol of everything that had gone wrong within a city planning. Now the bulldozers are moving in to replace it with a new £800 million market development. The bulldozers and diggers have started, bit by bit, taking Birmingham's central market area apart. Most people in the city are glad to see the back of the bullring, but it wasn't always like this. The Bullring Shopping Centre is symbolic of the new Birmingham. There's nothing quite like it anywhere else in the world. When it was opened in 1964, the Bullring was seen as stylish, what shopping would be like in the future. But times changed. The Bullring came to represent what was wrong with Birmingham. This is what Prince Charles thought. Look at the Bullring. It has no charm, no human scale, no character, except arrogance. It's a planned accident. Now it's all set to go, part of a redevelopment worth more than three quarters of a billion pounds. The traders are overjoyed. They're very pleased. It's a, fr it's a nice, fresh, good fresh start for everyone. Over the last decade, much of Birmingham city centre has been transformed. Now it's the end of the line for the bullring, but some will miss it. It's got plenty of character about it. There'll be none when it's all modernised. There'll be none. So long as they build something similar but more modern, that's what it needs. The work that has begun here won't be complete for another four years. The £800 million of investment in Birmingham is the biggest regeneration programme in Europe and consigns the bullring to architectural history. Richard Bilton, BBC News, Birmingham. The redevelopment of the famous bullring indoor market has been taken over by a partnership of private sector firms. Birmingham City Council has transferred management to the Birmingham Alliance. 
Plans for the site include a new purpose-built market hall. It's hoped the regeneration program will create one of the most spectacular shopping venues in Europe. Welcome to Central News at 6 on, on a historic day. After years of planning, work has finally begun on one of the biggest city centre redevelopments since the war. When it's finished, Birmingham's Bull, Bull Ring will be a £400 million state-of-the-art shopping centre. Today, the bulldozers began to start demolition of the old Bull Ring. Our reporter Steve Keeling is there. Steve, what's been happening today? Well, guys, finally happened. Work has started. Men are still working here. They'll be here till about 7. It's the Bull Ring. It's a historic centre of Birmingham. St Martin's Church in the background. It means a lot to anybody who knows the city. And Jeff Pearce, you've worked in the, the old indoor market for donkey's years. Your feelings tonight? I think it's marvellous. We all said we'd believe it when we saw it happening, when they started pouring the concrete. And now I can stand here and see it happening. I think it's marvellous. It, it's a dream come true, really. How important is it for people like yourself and the city? It really is essential. We needed a new market. The city needed a new market. I think we deserved a new market. All the new buildings have gone in in Birmingham. We well, certainly need to see the boring regenerated. What was wrong with the old one, then? It was getting old and tired, really. It, it had been built a long time. It was out of date. The whole area around it is becoming old. And by comparison with the rest of the city, it just stood out as a sore thumb, really. Now, this new one isn't just being built. It's being built with your uh, involvement, isn't it? Tell me about that. Yes, they really have. They've discussed it with us. We've been invited into meetings. We've had a lot of sort of back-to-forward talk with them, what we need, what we think we need, what we need to make the place a success. I mean, they're investing mega millions, and we're investing years of work into yes. it. Yes, yes, but a point you'd like to make about the old market is what? Well, the fact we are still, I and mean, we're still, in spite of all this, we're surviving. We're trading successfully. We're open six days a week. There are probably a couple of dozen or more 30 food retailers there. They get up at 4 o'clock every morning. They're working 12 hours a day and they're making it work. And we're just hanging on now, ready for this. Well, Jeff, it won't be too much long to wait, will it? I believe this should be ready by Christmas 2000. With that, back to Guy Smith. The Bull Ring is a love-it-or-hate-it landmark in Britain's second city. Many people say it's ugly, but many also have a sentimental attachment to it. Let's take a quick look back at how the Bull Ring was first conceived more than 30 years ago and what the future now holds for it. The Bull Ring shopping centre is symbolic of the new Birmingham. There's nothing quite like it anywhere else in the world. The 1960s and a planner's dream. Birmingham's Bull Ring was the latest in architectural design. It was an ambitious idea, first developed in America and then brought over here. The new shopping centre was a symbol of a new Birmingham. You see, we tried to design something that had never been done before. Built a town within the city. More than 30 years on, though, and it's considered tired and old. What was Birmingham's boast to the world is now coming down, replaced by a new smarter image for the 21st century. But traders fear the traditional market shoppers will ill afford the new prices once a new shopping centre is built. The people that don't have so much money, where are they going to shop in the city centre? It'd be an injustice to the people of Birmingham if they try and remove the markets from this area. The city council and development company Hammerson are building the new bull ring. This is what it'll look like. Two department stores, a covered shopping centre and a new square around St Martin's Church, a market area since the 12th century. It'll be a new face for Birmingham and it's hoped to bring a big smile for those who'll use it. Mm. Now the jobs of 30 people hang in the back. ...for a new indoor market are laid. Central News, at a Central News time capsule will be placed inside. Where the contractors are working, the new ball ring indoor market will grow. And it's here we'll be burying Central News's time capsule. During the Victorian period, it was common practice to place small tokens and documents into the foundations of civil buildings. Birmingham is the city of a thousand trades, the workshop of the world, the toy shop of Europe. It was transformed from a small market town by the men and women who could take a lump of metal and forge and fashion it into a thing of beauty. From time to time, they turn up during redevelopment like these newspapers and programmes which trace the opening of the Cottage Hospital in Walsall in 1868. They tell us about one moment in time in Walsall and what was important to Walsall people at that moment in time. The only thing we haven't decided is what goes in our time capsule. We'll be putting in some archive film of the Bullring, 
But what else goes in well, is entirely up to you. We'll have more information in tonight's program. Now, looking ahead to tonight's Central News at 6, we have... Good night, you. Well, you can't stop progress, and meanwhile, call it progress, the redevelopment of Birmingham city centre is underway with the first phase concentrating on the famous markets area. We've negotiated with the developers for a central news time capsule to be built into the foundations of the new indoor market. Later in the programme, we'll be inviting you to send in your ideas for what you think should go inside it. First, though, this report from Kester Demar. This is what I call a time capsule. All mod cons and the ability to get you anywhere and any when. But our budget won't run to a TARDIS. We'll have to settle for something a little bit smaller than this. The important question is, what should go inside? And I think I know just the right person to ask. Hey, excuse me, Carl. All right. What's so special about the ball ring that we should remember it with a time capsule? What's so special about the ball ring is, quite simply, it's the most important spot in Birmingham. It was here in 1166 when Peter de Birmingham got a charter from the king that we first had a market. Before that, Birmingham was a minor, insignificant hamlet. And so the Bullring Market was where Birmingham began and would set us on the path to fame as a city. So what would you put in it? I'd put in some of the goods which helped to transform Birmingham from a small market town by the men and women who could take a lump of metal and forge and fashion it into a thing of beauty. And it's those metal goods that we should be putting into a time capsule. Things like buttons. It's not like them buttons you've got on there, but proper metal buttons. The kind that are worn by guardsmen, because they're manufactured here in Birmingham. I'd put in some steel pen nibs because the art of writing was democratised here in Birmingham. Before the steel pen nibs, you had to have a goose quill that was difficult to use and expensive. I'd put in photographs to show places like the ball ring and ordinary folk that work and play. In fact, how big is this time capsule going to be? I could fill it. <laughs> <laughs> Where the contractors are working, the new ball ring indoor market will grow. And it's here we'll be burying Central News' time capsule. During the Victorian period, it was common practice to place small tokens and documents into the foundations of civic buildings. From time to time, they turn up during redevelopment, like these newspapers and programmes which trace the opening of the Cottage Hospital in Warsaw in 1868. The only thing we haven't decided is what should go inside our time capsule. We'll be putting in some archive footage of the ball ring and the redevelopment, but what else goes in, we'll leave entirely up to you. Now, tomorrow is a special day in the shopper's calendar. Birmingham's new indoor market opens its doors for the first time. It's only a week since the old one closed, so storeholders have been working like mad to move in. And our reporter, Steve Keeling, has been with them as the clock ticks away. Steve. Yes, there's just a little over 12 hours to go before Birmingham's new indoor market opens to the public. Thousands of people are expected, some to buy, some probably just to have a good look. Well, what will they see? It's light years away from the old market, but just how different is it? Well, we ask the people who know best, the storeholders. It's far bigger than the last market. All in all, there's 55,000 square feet. It cost more than 20 million pounds. It took 11 months to build, and it was finished on time. There's 92 stores selling everything from handbags to fresh fruit. And there's parking for 900 cars. And this is the first stage of the entire new ball ring. So tomorrow's opening gives shoppers the first chance to experience the multi-million pound redevelopment of this area. Where then does the indoor market fit into the big picture? St Martin's Church is about the only part of Old Birmingham that will remain after the work's completed. The church is surrounded by roadworks and construction and it'll be several more years before the diggers and the demolition men are gone. Here's the new indoor market opening tomorrow and next to it the new rag market which welcomes its first customers next month. But you'll have to wait until 2003 to see the new bull ring. That will complete the city's transformation into a 21st century shopper's paradise. Well, time is ticking away here at Birmingham Indoor Market and, of course, they've only a few hours left before it opens. I think they're going to be working quite late into the night now 
Angie Tuck, you're one of the people behind the whole development. Um, it's only been a week since you closed the old one. How do you manage that? Well, the programme for the new bull ring is very tight. The first phase is the closure of the existing market. All the market traders have moved into the indoor market, and our commitment is for them only to lose one week's trade, and that's what we've done. Now, what's the big difference between the old and the new here? We've got high-tech refrigeration units, fridges and freezers, high-quality fit-outs for our dry goods stalls. We've got a 900-space car park. It's a supermarket, and they're ready to trade. Now, I think the car park's very important, isn't it? It's very important to these traders. They believe that people can come into the city, they can park in the car park above them, they can do their shopping, take their goods home very, very easily. It's very important to these market traders. Angie, thank you very much. Now, with us tonight also is Peter Kynock, who's one of the longest-serving market traders here, I think, uh, Peter. What do you think of your new home? We're all wonderfully excited. And, I mean, who wouldn't be? Just look at this food hall. I mean, supermarkets eat your heart out. It sounds, you sound very relieved. Did you ever think you'd see this day? No, we've been waiting a long time for this, but it's here and we're all very, very pleased. Now, I'm an old cynic. New building, new fittings. Does that mean new prices? Are they going No, up? no. The developers are holding their rents for the next couple of years, so we'll be able to offer the same bargains as we've always done. Well, Special opening offers tomorrow. Thank you very much, Peter. Well, bargains or not, the place opens at 9 o'clock tomorrow. Why not come along and have a look? Bob. Thanks, Steve. Now, Birmingham's indoor market's about to reopen. The new market's part of the major redevelopment of the city's bull ring, and it opens to the public tomorrow. Yes, traders have been putting the finishing touches to it throughout the day. Our reporter, Lindsay Doyle, was first in the queue. The past, and now the future. Opening tomorrow, the brand new Birmingham indoor market. The old market, part of the outdated 60s bullring development, had become rather tired. It was time to move on, and so we have. Modern facilities, spanky new stalls, more produce, more traders, and hundreds more parking spaces. Total excitement. Um, there's a load of enthusiasm. I think the guys just want to get on with it. It's been a long time in coming, and I don't think they can, they can hardly wait for it. This is going to be better, we're going to be, it's lovely in here, and we're going to do well. It's absolutely state-of-the-art, it's beautiful, everything is so modern. There, there isn't a comparison, there just isn't, it's, it's like it's back to the future. It's taken 11 months to build and is just the start. New department stores, including Selfridges, are coming to the city, as well as a new rag market. Building work is on schedule for the new bull rink to fully open in 2003. And for those with a nostalgic streak, the rotunda is staying put. One of Lindsay's favourite things, our shopping correspondent there. Chris Hethsketh reporting. Now, shoppers have been getting their first chance to check out Birmingham's new indoor market, which opened to the public this morning. Look at all these lovely people here. Come on, spend your money. That's what this market's about. And spend they did. Hundreds of shoppers have been bagging the bargain at the new £20 million indoor market in Birmingham. First impressions? Definitely a fantastic improvement. It's very much like the old and it's got such vitality. Lovely, really nice and airy and it looks clean. I've only just come in and um, I think it looks wonderful. It's very, very bright and clean. More variety, more people and it's big and nice. And despite a few gripes, Five toilets for ladies is absolutely disgusting. It six and a half hours to find you where you go, you know, where you generally serve. The mood among shoppers was upbeat. Very nice, good market, I like very much. Nice, really nice people, you know, nice market. I'm very pleased. <laughs> All right, love. And finally, a head teacher has been named. Britain's most famous couples have officially opened a city's new indoor markets and they took the opportunity to do a bit of shopping while they were there. They're usually at each other's throats, but today it was all smiles from Bill Tarmy and Liz Dawn, better known as Jack and Vera Duckworth, as they opened Birmingham's new indoor markets. Nothing nicer than an indoor market. Yeah. It is a market and it's warm and it's dry. Yeah. Great, super. <laughs> How does it compare yeah. with Rita's shop? Oh, there's no comparison. None. It's bigger. I can't see the sausage. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see Fred Elliott coming in here, can you? <laughs> It'd be too fast for Fred. <laughs>
The markets represent the first stage of the new ballroom development. They cost £20 million to build and boast 92 stalls selling everything from handbags to fresh fruit. And true to their word, Jack and Vera are keen to sample all the delights of the new markets. Great sports. That's before magistrates in Leamington Spa on Monday. The indoor market at Birmingham's Bull Ring was officially opened this morning by Coronation Street's Jack and Vera Duckworth. A large crowd turned out to meet the couple who toured around some of the 92 stalls in the new market. It's the first part of the multi-million pound redevelopment of the Bull Ring, which is expected to be completed in the year 2003. Our Lenten theme of Psalm 23. Traditionally an industrial city, Birmingham has reinvented itself in recent years. Where 1,600 factory chimneys once darkened the skyline, now conference and exhibition centres are the backdrop to a modern city, which is the business and communications heart of the Midlands. Everywhere you look, they're redeveloping. This is the Bull Ring, until just a few weeks ago, the most famous landmark in Birmingham. But it's now making way for a £400 million retail development. And guess what? In the middle of all the chaos, St Martin's, one of the oldest churches in the area. As Birmingham boomed in the Industrial Revolution, so did... It is your moment-by-moment -moment guide to just how much Birmingham is changing. And watching its transformation is just the click of a mouse away. It's a building site at the moment, but in a couple of years' time, it'll become a thriving shopping and leisure centre. There are three web cameras up here on the top of the rotunda feeding back pictures to us at Pebble Mill. They're updated every 15 minutes or so and it's certainly a more comfortable way of viewing the redevelopment than slogging up 20 flights of stairs to stand in the rain and cold like we've just done. I see that every day I walk past it but for someone who didn't get in, I mean, you know, I think, I think it's a really, really good idea. It's uh, another way to take a look it's, uh, at the uh, Birmingham being built. So if you want to keep tabs on the redevelopment of Birmingham City Centre from the comfort of your own home, log on to www.bbc.co.uk forward slash Birmingham. Happy viewing. Dedication indeed. Now, the pride of place of Birmingham's new multi-million pounds boring shopping centre is being lowered into position this lunchtime. The giant bronze bull will form the centrepiece of the new shopping complex when it opens in September. It arrived on the back of a lorry before it was lowered into place in the centre of the city a short time ago. Good evening, I'm Nick Owen. Police have tonight carried out controlled explosions close to a house where stocks... The centrepiece of Birmingham's new multi-million pound bullring shopping centre has taken up residence today. The giant bronze bull will form the focal point of the new shopping complex when it opens in September. It arrived on the back of a lorry before it was lowered into place.